The venue is buzzing here in Antwerp as we move in to the top 32 of the European Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship here in Antwerp. It's incredibly exciting to know that we're heading towards the end. Thousands of duelists have taken part, but now only 32 remain. And it's going to be very, very exciting to see what happens in this next duel. So I'm going to waste no more time introducing them to you. So let's rev it up. So on my right, we have Alex Robertson, who we've seen in a feature match just earlier today. And on my left, we have Lars Junginger, and this is going to be quite the match. Gentlemen, I'm going to present you with the dice. And you may roll to see which of you is going to go first. Okay, that's a five for Lars. And that is a ten for Alex. You're going to go first. Alex is going to go first. So I'm going to throw you guys over to our wonderful casters. Guys, over to you. Thank you very much, Ed. It is great to talk to you again. So. This top 32 match of the 2022 European Championships in Antwerp was brought to you by Sebastian, who <laughs> scouted out the player Lars Jünginger, yes. who's playing versus Alex Robertson, who has already had a pretty decisive win. So why don't we just go immediately to the table so we waste no further time? Yep, we've waited a long time, so let's just start it off. Top 32, Alex Robertson versus Lars Jünginger we have. And as you were just saying, I was scouting on the floor, looking out for interesting decks, looking out for good players, and I found something. I saw a very impressive game that Lars Junginger played in top 64, actually, and he is on our beloved Altergeist strategy. We do both have a passion for this deck, so we are very happily featuring this here. And on the other hand, of course, we have Alex Robinson, second place finisher once more of this year's UK Nationals. Very impressive player with his Rika Son of a Long Deck, which is popping off like crazy this weekend. So if you are just watching the stream and you are not participating and you're not in this venue, you might get a wrong idea of what's meta in this tournament. Absolutely, yeah. Go ahead, what, what is meta in this tournament? We have then? seen so many sprites and so many Telemans players. It was, it was really hard to spot something different. Because all the other cards, if you like, find one in a table of ten, they just also blend in sometimes. But uh, there are quite a few rogue decks, and they pack a punch. Like exact, look at this Rickerson Avalon deck. It has performed so well so far. Oh, so, uh, and there okay. is a reason why this deck is performing well because it has this one card starter. Alex Robertson instantly has it again. The normal summon, the the little little vanilla monster he's using there. The Sunsea Genius Loki. 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 <laughs> However you want it. There it is for you. It's being link summoned off into the Sun of Along Dryas, of course. And look, I, I cannot imagine how often this weekend Alex Robertson had to explain his Rikar and Sun of Along cards to his opponents because nobody was expecting this. I mean, Lars is also playing with a deck that nobody's expecting, yeah. but those cards have been around for a while, so you get used to them at some point. But this stuff, the Rika Sun of Along deck, is just crazily new. New support from Power of the Elements, we talked about it earlier. I'm pretty sure we're going to see the new cards here in this game already. And yeah, this deck is just making waves here in this tournament. Imagine so you're in top 32 of the European Championships and you're in a featured match and your opponent opens cards that you have never heard of. I would feel pretty, pretty uncomfortable, to be honest. Yeah. I rather want to have a deck that I know what to do against. Yeah. And Lars cannot be in love with his situation right now. But let me tell you something. Actually, it's quite good for Lars that he's facing the Rika Sun Avalon deck because there are no real negates that this deck puts up with its end board. And when Lars just draws into one of his uh, Mystic Mines, for example, then he has a chance to just activate it and pretty much lock down the opponent's board completely. Yeah. Gotta be honest, gotta disagree with you there. We have seen this exact same matchup before. And honestly, the Rika deck is so good at playing around Mystic Mine. You have a card in your deck, the Rika Glamour, that gets set by your field spell, the Concon. And this one tributes your own monsters, so you can just basically set the card from your deck and yeah. get but rid I of mean, your own monsters to gain more resources. Earlier on, we actually had that exact matchup happening here on stream, Altergeist versus Rika San Avalon. But the thing there was, he had to use his mine while controlling monsters himself. Yeah. But I think that's obviously not the preferred scenario. So I guess Lars will just try to activate Mystic Mind to a full combo board of Alex. And that would work out a lot better. And also, 
our good old Lars is not just playing Mystic Mine, he's playing a bunch of going second cards which can put in work here because, let me tell you, he's also main decking Lava Golems, which can be yeah. huge in this matchup for sure, because not only Alex can tribute opponent's monsters, <laughs> no, he can do it as well with the good old Lava Golem. And uh, in the side deck as well, we will see the Winged Dragon of Ra's fear mode coming in, so he's definitely prepared to handle big combo boards for sure. Wasn't it even Alex who played versus uh, the other guy's deck on stream? Yeah, I think right? so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this him. guy played on stream twice in 2022 <laughs> versus Alter guys. Seems like our world is broken to me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that does not seem right. But well, let's see what Alex can pull off here. The Mudan has been summoned. There was a Paddle before, so he already has a Paddle as a resource in his graveyard. Paddle is just going to resummon itself in the opponent's end phase over and over again as long as this game will take. And as long as there is no Mystic Mind on the field, of course. And there we see it being highlighted to Mudan, the Rickham Ferry. Rickar Ferry. And I'm really much expecting Alex to go further and further here, just creating his combo board. And I'm pretty sure he's also going to search for his trap as an interruption for his opponent. He's usually going to set up as part of his combo end board the Rika sheet I'm talking about. So there's the yeah. Lancer now. We have go ahead. the Melias in the grave and now Bangalancer. Yep, yep. We're just linking up. That's the thing. Like the Dryas, the first Sun of a Long Link monster, is insane, and you really need to resolve that. And from there on, all the other Sun of a Long Link monsters are basically just there for link climbing, and you just climb and climb, and then you end on Bengal Lancer, as you just can see. And you even contribute it here, because it doesn't really matter that much, because it can reborn itself back to the graveyard pretty, pretty easily. So he can resolve the Rika Glamour tributing the Bengal Lancer here. And he's not done yet, of course. This no, looks like, was it Snowdrop? It looked like Snowdrop. No, I think it's a, he's going to the rank 4. I don't think that Snowdrop can reduce its own level, or can it? Um, I'm quite sure it can. Let's see it here. Let's get it into the card highlight once again. There we have it, Snowdrop, the Rika Ferry. Even I think it was Princess and Primula. Okay, that's also, yeah, true, it was, uh, yeah, for sure, it was Primula. Um, even when we were caught a little bit off guard by this deck popping off so much, I mean, we anticipated it a little much, a, a little bit, because prior to the event on Friday, we were recording deck profiles of like the most popular decks already. And as you have seen over the course of the weekend, there was Sprite, there was Telemans, there was Math Mag, which definitely were, were like the three most popular decks. But we also recorded Rika, so we like expected it a little bit, but we really didn't expect it to pop up that much. Yeah, this is this has such a great conversation rate, you know. There are a few players playing it, but they nearly all talked. So uh, let's see where this goes. Markus Patel is also still in the tournament. Yeah, and not gonna lie, Markus Patel was first after Swiss. So that's something we cannot yeah. take away from him. So Rika was no. actually ah. first after Swiss, and we're in the turn of last, and he starts it off with the Lava Golem, and the crowd is cheering him on. That is the first oh, card he's resolving. Oh, but does the Exceeds trigger, Strenna, when it has Exceeds material and it gets tributed? It, it looks like it. Does it trigger? Yes, he's going yes. to his extra deck. Then you can special summon the Sacred Tree Beast. Oh boy, that's not... I mean, it's great to have Lava Golem uh, being summoned to the opponent's side of the field, but now he can just activate the effect, so he can at least capitalize a little bit, so... That could have been much worse here. That could have been a lot worse. And now Lars is picking up the Hypertron and has to read it once again. Yeah. He is confronted here with some cards you don't usually see at the top cards of an event. But maybe from now on we're yeah. going to see a whole lot Absolutely. more of Rika. Because this deck looks spicy. It looks also very much fun to play. Oh, and there is Lars activating Demise of the Land wow. on the special summon of the Hypertron. But I don't know if you can, right? That's a discussion they're just having with the judge, and I think he cannot activate it. The judge just confirmed it. Because we talked about that scenario early on as well. Demise of the Land is a when trigger. And uh, just bring it up to, oh, uh, yeah. to maybe our card highlight so you can read it as well. It starts with when your opponent special summons a monster. That means when that was not the last thing to happen, this card cannot be activated because it basically miss it, misses its timing window to activate the card even. We are going off with the Prosperity though here. Was it Prosperity into Duality? Looked like it at least. 
I mean, that works. You don't draw with duality. So you can still activate it after Prosperity, of course. Nice yeah. Starlight Rare, Prosperity. But I doubt, I doubt it was the duality because he just goes ahead yep. and sets three cards. And now that information is there for Alex Robertson that Last actually has Demise of the Land, which is a bit annoying for him, for sure. This is because he can now just yeah. purely play around it. By attacking. By just attacking, indeed. Yeah. He's going to take 1,000 damage from the Alpha Golem every standby phase. Yeah. And uh, this is something you can trigger Harvenus with, by the way, which is kind of funny. Yep, but he goes Rika Glamour right as the first thing he does in the main phase. And yeah, last thinking. Don't you have to tribute something for Coast there? I was thinking the exact same thing. But Maybe he's he just, just searching for the Mudan. Ah, no. You can just search something, and then when you tribute something, you can search another card. Oh, okay. I see, I see, I see. So, so I misread the card the entire time. I was thinking that the wording is weird, but <laughs> I just can't read. That's a very, very common mistake you're having. I, I realized that a couple of times yeah. <laughs> in our casting career that you're definitely having problems with reading. But so am I. <laughs> so am I. So we're definitely uh, <laughs> quite similar in that regard. But last is sitting there with triple back row. One of them pretty likely is Demise of the Land, not gonna lie. That is a card you have to set in that scenario. But Alex doesn't look like he's planning on special summoning, right? It doesn't look like something he's considering here. I mean, he has the petal here, which is basically... Oh, no, the petal is not the negate, right? The the princess is the negate, the small yeah. Princess, but he has it in the graveyard, right? I don't think he ever went for princess. I think he turn. summoned it uh, and then went into Strenna with it. Let's see. No, that all looks like petals in the graveyard. All petals. But what are those set cards for Lars? Like, three set cards he hasn't done anything with yet. He just directly hands the card over to his opponent. <laughs> like, yeah, just take it. I don't even... I, I'm not even guessing that you know what this is. Go on, read it. <laughs> that probably was his gesture all weekend long, just handing over Rika cards. This is another Rika card you want to read? Yes, sure, go ahead. You will have to read because those cards are worth yeah. reading because they're absolutely smashing it and they are not only once but even twice in the top 32 of the European Championship here in Antwerp. And they are smashing it without Smasher's main deck. Sure. It's very impressive. Is there even any oh. level 2 monsters in there? Now it's getting so. personal here. Oh, and that could be a huge turn around, but there is there is the princess you were talking about. There was a princess in the graveyard. Yeah. There was a princess in the graveyard and he's using princess effect to negate the effect of multifaker. Yeah, multifaker immediately negated. I'm thinking Lava Golem is really strong for multifaker and still carry this because you can just bounce back the Lava Golem and take your opponent's bot every time. I love that addition to his deck. He yeah. Absolutely killed it with that decision. And there's the hard drawn Mystic Mind Blow. He couldn't activate it by resolving the good old Demise of the Land, but he has a negate with Hyperdrum there. And Lars is checking. Lars is double checking, double reading. Can he really? There is the Forbidden Droplet on the Hypertron, though. And you don't need this Demise of the Lands anymore. This hard drawn Mystic Mine really hits like a truck here. This certainly looks like it's going to resolve. And I mean, he cannot get rid of that Lava Golem himself, you know? That's pretty disappointing for Alex, because you said it earlier, Rika Glamour can just tribute all yep. of his plant monsters, but there's a Lava Golem, which is not a plant monster yep. on his side of the field now. Can we check his extra deck? What can he do? How can he link away, like, this entire field? I'm is having there a, a look, and I'm afraid there's, like, pretty much only plant-specific link monsters in his extra deck. So actually. what about the Exceeds monsters? What about the Teardrop? We, we can double-check. I'm honestly not 100% sure. Maybe that could be... Teardrop. Two level 8 monsters. <laughs> is it really? So but he can Lava just actually overlay with the Lava Golem, then he has a plant monster. That would be crazy if we get to, get to see that point. And there was a duality. Maybe he yeah. didn't activate the duality last turn. Also, he has plenty of monsters that are level 5 or higher. So he can just actually tribute summon over it. Yep, there is the Rika Con Con effect being used. Setting the Rika Glamour. Instantly activating it, apparently. Oh no, he's just setting it, fair enough. And Lars now bored himself some time. He could yeah. actually resolve that Mystic Mine on Alex Robertson, and now he has to reconsider his options. He does not have to play around Demise of the Land anymore, but he is faced with the real Mystic Mine now onto the field. I mean, if he gets to attack, then he will play around 
demise of the land because his opponent is at 2,400 life points. So he attacked for a lot oh. of damage. And yeah, Which this is, is going to be a tribute summon. Which is yeah, tribute. Of, and of course, we are playing yeah. monsters that they can just be used as a regular tribute summon, and now we start to link it off. Yep. Alex is working his way through to actually get rid of that Very Mystic good. Mine. There is Sylvan Dance Peon, also a really cool card, really iconic and card. And we have the Jasmine again, and we are activating the wow. Glamour. And this is how easy you can get rid of a Mystic Mine on your opponent's side of the field. Just link away everything and then tribute your card to search two. Yeah, and Alex had that little side eye over to the crowd and he was like, are you guys impressed? Are you guys impressed by how easily I just get rid of all the monsters on my field and now I'm probably going to out that Mystic Mine and yes, it, it has, has to left discard the field. A card because he has so many cards in hand. And there's another duality for last. What are we seeing there? Sadly, it's not the picture. I think I see one there's trap, which is Metaverse. Oh, and he's grabbing the mana verse. Can Alex work his way through another Mystic Mine? That I mean, should be hard. As long as he knows that it's there, it's rather easy, right? He probably has another Glamour. He's probably playing three. Yeah, exactly. He he's is, playing three. So you just summon a monster and attack. And if that gets Mystic Mine, then you just set another Glamour and activate it and wait for the Mystic Mine to destroy itself during the end phase of the turn. But he already used two Rika Glamours. So yeah. If he gets the to one mine, more yeah. Mystic Mine, it would be really, really tough for Alex to actually get over that. So, back on Alex. Honestly, that reveal of Metaverse was pretty good, though, because it at least yeah. buys him another turn, most likely. Now the Petal is being activated. Yeah, Petal is back there, and he also uses Con Con there, I think, searching for the good old Snowdrop, which we have been talking about a lot. But, you know, finally he added it to the hand. Just and in, in, in last shoes, do, do you just shotgun the metaverse? I guess you do, right? Yeah. Because what are you waiting for there? Basically, your opponent is just maybe even putting up a negate. So just yeah. get it straight. Just put the Mystic Mind to the board so your opponent is not going to use any monster effects anymore. So all of those older decks like Sky Striker and Ultra Geist from basically the same format, they rely pretty heavily on Mystic Mind, no? They do. They need the time. And now Alex is not even resolving Rika Glamour. So he gives Lars some turns. We have had Alex pass it over to Lars now twice. So he can collect some trap cards. And as soon as the other guys that gets to some trap cards, it will be tough for Alex to actually play through everything here. <laughs> Alex is on five back row himself now. Those are probably a lot of spell cards as well. So how, why does he not have another Glamour? He sets a monster. I don't know, like, I did only see him resolve two Glamours so far. Oh, and we're now Tribute Summoning, or what are we? Yes, we are Tribute Summoning for a big monster, which probably then was the Snowdrop, uh, snowdrop we yeah. just searched. So we finally see it in action, just being a set monster, but what can you do? And we are picking up the cards, wow. and that can only mean that Alex Robertson actually concedes here, doesn't he? I think Lars Junginger, with his Altergeist strategy, takes down Game 1 here in Top 32 of the European Championship. And that wasn't looking great for him, but he turned it around like a champ and is up 1-0 now here, here in this match. Lars just perfected the Altergeist strategy. <laughs> I mean, he is the only Altergeist player left in the yeah. tournament, so you got to say he definitely did its thing. And when I watched him play earlier, the moves he made, he made moves I've never seen before in an Altergeist deck before. He abused, for example, Selene, which is a card you usually see yeah. to actually get into access code chalk or stuff like that. He used that to special summon back cards such as Altergeist Multifaker and stuff like that. So, or maybe even Meloseek, so Meloseek gets you to Multifaker in the end. He was really going through his whole extra deck and all of that, and I really think he's, he built a perfect Altergeist strategy there. Definitely. This looks really good. So we have seen that he's playing, you told us he's playing cards like um, uh, Celine and combo pieces. Yes. But he's also playing part of Extravagance. So why don't you lead us through the extra deck? Which cards is he playing multiple times? Of course, the all-time classic of the Altergeist Extra. strategy. Sure. We know that. And uh, then he's also on the Altergeist Kidolga, which is kind of interesting because um, usually you didn't really play that, but he decided to do so. And then stuff such as uh, the Christian Hockey Firebrax, Dark, Hita. He actually plays multiple Charmers, being Dark and Hita. And then some generic stuff as well. Phoenix, Unicorn, even Liner. I see Liner as well. So he even plays yeah. triple of the Charmers, which is pretty cool. But I think in general, what we can say about the deck is 
it does not rely that heavily on resolving trap cards, to be honest. Because when I look over his main deck, yeah. it's almost more spell cards than trap cards, to be honest. Which is for yeah. an Alter Guys deck pretty iconic. But and one of them is Mystic Mind. Of course, of course, yeah. That's like the card that brings him time, the card he needs in a certain matchups to have time to actually draw into the trap cards. He is not playing that many of, or yeah. draw into Lava Golem and stuff like that. And uh, it worked out like a charm for him here in game one. And Alex didn't want to waste any more time because I think Alex is very, very much a pro player. Thinking about the time management aspect of the game as well, he yeah. just didn't want to waste any more time. He knew he would have a, just maybe a slight chance to win game one, but he but wants to make sure to play out all three games. I mean, we have seen a main deck burn card on the opponent's side of the field, or yes. rather on his side of the field, but in the opponent's deck, which was Lava Golem. You don't want to get Lava Golem just shortly before timeout. That is absolutely true, and I see that the players are ready for round or for game two of yeah. this top 32 match so over to the table again game two starting now and of course alex robertson is going to be the one starting it off here for us there so i'm just we going to that. show you guys the kidolga that basti was talking about for those of you who don't know the effect, it's when another Altergeist monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one monster and their GY, special summoner to your zone, this, card's point, uh, this card points to. But each turn it cannot attack unless this card has already declared an attack this turn. If this card is destroyed by battle, you target one Altergeist card in your GY, add it to your hand. Oh boy, I think I just saw Alex passing with nothing. Yeah, maybe he has still just decided to side in evenly match going first and was like, okay, if I have to start, then I'm just going to pass. If I, uh, if I draw evenly going first, then I'm just going to pass. So maybe you get up the side deck from, from him. Yeah, I can do so. And I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We have evenly matched in his side yeah. deck, yes. And there's not really that big of a trouble giving the Alter Guys deck a turn when you have evenly matched yeah. in your hand, because he's definitely not siding in Solemn Judgments or Dark Bribes going second. Yeah. So that evenly match is probably going to resolve. And uh, you just took 1,600 of damage through a, uh, through a marionette, so I think you're doing fine. <laughs> yeah. I actually do think you are okay with that. I mean, of course, well, it, it's tough. Uh, I guess you just side in evenly matched and uh, Hoppy's Feather Duster, and when you draw evenly matched on Pancratops, of course. That's another card yeah. you side in, and that does nothing when your opponent has no monsters. Yeah. And when you don't draw them, you combo off, and if you draw them, you just pass. This is a good strategy, I guess. So you can maybe even OTK. Yes, kind of funny that just passing is a good strategy, but yeah. I, I definitely understand what you mean. It definitely is a valid strategy here. And he is thinking about responding to the summon, because if you have Solemn Strike, you might as well yeah. just strike the summon here. Oh, but it's Demise of the Land. Oh, and this is really tough because Pancratops now can't use its effect. Oh, it can. It can. It can Absolutely potentially can. chain. Because yeah. there's. No, it can't chain to this. But Oh, it can chain to this. <laughs> so he has no cards left on the field. But you could also just. It's interesting that he decides not to pop the Marionetta. Oh! oh! Now we are actually getting to a state yeah. where no player has monsters on the board, yeah. which is somewhat interesting because I was just Mystic Mine is about to be activated, yeah. I would say. Oh, but no, it's not. It's Secret Village of the Spell Carsters. Oh, this is crazy now. And he has multi faker wow. in hand as well. Wow. This is the turning point. This is looking great all of a sudden. Alex Robertson, because there is a Spell Carster now on the board, is being locked out of activating Spell Cards. Lars Jünginger just really loves field spells that don't let your opponent play. Seriously, see good village of the spellcasters. When was the last time you were seeing that in a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh When deck? I played it in Outer Guys. <laughs> okay, of course. YCS Milan 2018. Forever ago, you yeah. mean. <laughs> and Lars Junginger, Lars Junginger still sticking to that strategy, and Alex can only answer it with a set card, and it's back over to Lars. I mean, imagine getting even lead here in this turn. That would have been sick, but there's wow, normal summon Melo Sig now as well. He has it all. Lars has all the cards he wants and needs here. Yeah, Alex destroyed the other Altergeist player before, Dimitri. No, that was the... Dimitri, I think, was our yeah, Eldritch, Eldritch player. player. I think uh, it was very similar. I think it was Adam or something, an English yeah. player. Adam Fleming, I right. think it was. And this one just has a 
different list. It's so different from the other Altergeist lists yeah. I have ever seen. You were you were laughing at me when I told you, hey, he has some cards that could definitely help him here in this Recon matchup, and you were like, yeah, yeah but still the matchup is so bad. But Lars Junginger here really proving the point that this deck can play pretty much versus anything, to be honest. Lars, I, I actually want this deck to go into the yeah. finals now. Altergeist all the way along. And he just scoops. This is over. Alex lost the game, he just scoops it. And Lars Junginger advances to the top 16 of the European Championship 2022 with Altergeist? Back in time, we still we are in 2022, but it is Altergeist being part of the top 16 and Lars Junginger impressively goes ahead here and wins top 16. The crowd loved it, so I think we have a lot of Altergeist fans in the crowd as well. So they are happy for this deck to still perform. And good. we even saw Altergeist monsters yes. in game two. <laughs> Absolutely. He absolutely ended the dream of Alex Robertson's yeah. Rika journey here. Yeah. So one of the two Rika players is out already. And I talked to you about that before the round, actually. I was saying it is a really, really cool deck to actually top an event and be surprisingly at the top tables of an event and maybe even being first after Swiss. But in Top Cut, you are going to meet more and more people yeah. who will know what the deck is doing. Yeah, they will know when to hand trip you and how to. And uh, yeah, we can actually, talking about the Top Cut, I think we have the bracket. Oh yeah, you're right. Let's hop over and see what the Top 32, and we can what look at the top 32 players are looking like. Who are we still having in the field? There we go. So we have Marcus Patel versus Imran Khan. Yes, so Marcus Patel, the other son of a long yeah. Rika player, maybe he's doing better than his friend Alex Robertson. And then we see Tritai, I talked about him earlier. Oh, he's still in. Yeah, that's he's still in, my friend. Him. That's good for him for sure. Federico Micozzi, big Italian name, yeah. still rocking it for the Italian fans. Second place at YCS Milan where I played Altergeist. Yep, and of course Federico Pastore as well. So, And I think Danilo Romano, just by his name, probably is Italian too. So we have a lot of Italians yeah. still in the field. As always, Italians still a very strong Yu-Gi-Oh! nation. We still have Sean Smat in here. As I told you, he's a national yeah. champion himself. So maybe he's turning national champion into European champion this weekend. Would be kind of cool. Matteo Modanini is also in there. So, so many Italian players wow. here. It's crazy. Looking at the down, like Alessio Sifola and Simone Sofoli, also both yeah. Italian. There's so many Italians in here. Also, Matteo Giuni, like crazy. Then we see Luca Foyan, still impressive with, with yeah. his team, uh, with his uh, tier, deck. tier deck. That's what I wanted to Life say. Trends, uh. But also, we haven't seen a lot of French guys so far. But Lucas Lancelot having. The French flag still being raised here in top 32. Let's see how far he can advance with this. And uh, let's go over to the next quarter of the top 32 bracket. Caleb Cook, we saw him earlier in the yeah. featured match with his Sprite deck, still rocking it. Owen Wilson, another one of the British guys. But Owen Wilson has a tough opponent here. Yeah, Ryan Jabri, who won a YCS, I think, yeah, with Salomon Great, of course. He's also one of the French players in Top Cut. Yep, yep. The French are still in for sure. They are definitely competing. Then we have Vladis Baranovsky. That would also yeah. be a fan favorite for sure. Absolutely. Vlad this guy is such a sympathetic guy. In the featured match earlier where yeah. he lost actually to yeah. uh, Psychic Life Trance. He was just right? laughing so hard when he saw Psychic Life Trends after his opponent his in time paid 1000 life points just to summon eventually the Life Trance and gain back 1200. So. Yeah, that was that was killing him. His reaction was was beautiful, wasn't yeah. it? Like he just laughed at it and topped anyways. You know, he yeah. just went through whatever, and now he's in top 32. Like a boss, absolutely. So last eight, eight players we have, and what? Wow! What this a last is quarter huge. we have. This is so huge. So we have Herman Hansen versus Patrick Döblin. Uh, Patrick Döblin, I shared a room with in Milan, but a year later. So. <laughs> <laughs> The powerhouse from Sweden, yeah. he impressed us a lot in his featured match very early on in day one and he's still going strong. And I said it then, I said it, this guy can win this tournament. For sure. And Which is not a hot take to be fair, so definitely this is not, not a genius prediction of mine. This is clearly one of the best players in the world who also topped worlds once. Yeah. Speaking of genius players in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, best player of the world, Joshua Schmidt also yeah. sitting there, still in the tournament, top 32. I would love to see him in the feature match too. He's definitely someone who could also take it down. Yeah. And I'm definitely uh, looking forward to seeing him later in the tournament too. And go ahead, who's... Bryce to the year. Oh. I think, I think if there is maybe an I missing or I am missing something. 
but uh, he's also a really good French player, if I'm not wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. Yeah. I think the name is actually correct, but it's definitely a French guy for sure. And uh, then Zio we still Mundi. have still a such Zio a Mundi. nice guy, also very sharp looking. What a cool dude! I'm really happy that he made it to the top 32. He's playing versus Shuri Wang. Shuri Wang? Yeah, probably. Yeah, and again, a friend of mine, David Erpen. Uh, the Swiss powerhouse, you can call him. This guy has been topping everything lately, or let's not say lately, in the last few years, actually. And he's playing versus Georgi Danev. Yeah. So, speaking of all the people in top 32, let's speak to someone who's in top 16 already. Yeah. Let's get over to the winner's interview, Lars Junginger with Art. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Sebastian. I am here with Lars Junginger, who is our first feature match into the top 16. First off, Lars, congratulations. How does it feel to be top 16 in one of the Euros competitions? Really, really nice. Nice. I never expected that, but it's really amazing feeling, really. So you were in an interesting matchup there because Alex earlier on was up against another Altergeist deck and he bodied the deck. Yeah. Whereas you had the opposite. You completely had him against the ropes. Going through some of your plays, you hard drew Mystic Mine into Forbidden Droplet. You had two Mystic Mines throughout the whole thing and you kept him against the ropes. There was a point where all he could do was set back row and pass and you basically just took it to the end. Talk us through what you were thinking throughout the game. Yeah, I was thinking that I can make a Melusik and Spoofing combo, but in this case, they, maybe they are playing Spoofing and I can just go for deck out. So that's the simplest way to win and without risk I, I won and that was the way why I go for deck out, yeah. And you had some interesting cards in there. The commentators were saying that they weren't expecting to see things like Kidolga in your deck. So why do you play cards like that? Kidolga? Yeah. The commentators were saying that they didn't expect to see it in there. What's the Kidolga? The Link monster. My, my Link monster, Kodolga, I don't yeah. know. Altergeist Kodolga. Ah, okay, that's the one. I'm uh, playing it once because um, I only play a tough Altergeist card, so only two Milo Six and something like that. And um, if I have the option to run into the monster, I can add one Altergeist card back from the graveyard. And that was the reason, but I never summoned it. It's just uh, for Prod of Prosperity, so it's an option, not more. And you also had a great moment with Secret Village of the Spellcasters completely locking your opponent down. What is it about Altergeist that you like? Because in this format, it's quite an unusual deck choice, but it's got you this far. So what is it that you like about Altergeists? About Altergeist, uh, that you can play Mystic Mine and the spoofing and Melusik combo is just broken. Um, and that's the reason why I'm playing Altergeist, because of Mystic Mine, actually. Well, it's got you into the top 16. So one more time, congratulations, Lars. And guys, we are going to be right back as we move into those top 16 duels. It's going to be brilliant. Don't go anywhere. Lots more coverage coming as we head towards the 